cheese. Again, good morning. Um, welcome to uh, this soil moisture and wildfire prediction workshop. Uh, thank you all for, for attending today. Uh, we're very pleased to be immersed here in, in uh, what we think is the right community to push forward these ideas of integrating soils and um, fire. What is your summary of the fire workshop? The workshop today has been a really unique uh, opportunity uh, bringing together uh, people from a variety of different research disciplines uh, but also you know different job functions we've got private industry people here we've got uh, federal uh, agency employees uh, and state employees uh, researchers like myself so it, it's really a nice mix of people coming at this issue of uh, wildfire uh, from many different directions and what's bringing us together today is a sort of a common curiosity and sort of imagining the possibilities of how we might use soil moisture information uh, to better have better wildfire danger ratings better wildfire preparedness there we go okay um, so as Matt said, I'm the director of the USDA Northern Plains Climate Hub. I'm based in Fort Collins, Colorado, um, and I'm here for uh, representing the SMERGE team. You'll hear about SMERGE later. Our mission, uh, in a nutshell, is providing climate information to benefit agriculture and forestry. And so that will uh, be the last introduction, I, I think. I won't promise, but I think. Why did we... Um, get a little bit of attention, I guess, for uh, bringing these ideas together for soil moisture and wildfire. And so um, we are, uh, our, our project is wildfire probability mapping based on regional soil moisture models. And so I've already introduced a little bit of, you know, what we're focusing on. Summarizing the workshop, it's sort of this novel idea of using soil moisture to help feed into our fire models, either our fire danger models or fire behavior models. And again, it's sort of novel because, as, as was pointed out in the workshop, historically we've used indices, right, an index for maybe drought. Uh, and then we relate drought to fuel moisture and measuring soil moisture. And so, again, it's a new frontier. Uh, our first long presentation I'll say, uh, Tim Brown is going to uh, help to set the tone for us about um, the wildfire conditions okay, in the U.S. Looking forward to a very long talk, is what I understand. No, this is, uh, actually, I really appreciate that uh, going around the room the only way that we did. There's a lot of diversity here. I thought uh, we'd just start with a simple picture of how uh, fire in the water bottle works. Um, soil gets wet, vegetation grows, it dries, it burns, it gets wet again. Any questions? Um, what is the role of soil moisture in, in wildfires or in prescribed burns? Um, is soil moisture an important predictor? of wildfire risk? Is it an important predictor of um, how well a prescribed burn might go, or how well a system that has already been burned might recover from that burn? This is, this is a scientific question that is not well fleshed out yet. Um, and so the workshop was bringing together scientists from the, the world of soil moisture, so a lot of soil moisture experts, together with people who are experts in fire. Does soil moisture matter? But to answer that question, we need good soil moisture data across a large geographic scale and through time. And all of you are here today uh, because you know so many things that I do not know. <laughs> so I have a lot of learning opportunities today, and I think probably all of us have some learning opportunities today. So I'm really thankful for that. And so we're going to kind of get some conversations going in, in some groups. And you can see uh, the questions that we intend to address here in this session. Small group discussion questions. Morning breakout. What are some top things you are hoping to learn about or gain today? 
What would you like to learn about the relationship between soil moisture and wildfire? What are your main sources for information on current wildfire danger conditions? What are your main sources for information on current soil moisture conditions? For all of us to, to better understand uh, sort of when and where uh, fires may occur. To summarize today's workshop, I would say uh, we're bringing together um, folks from the soil science community and the fire modeling community um, with a little bit of ecology and spatial modeling uh, to find ways that we can link all these concepts together and then um, really make better tools for improving management uh, around, in and around wildfires. A little overview on soil moisture monitoring, primarily from a uh, remote sensing perspective and modeling and um, as mentioned, uh, it's kind of segue into the SMERD product, which is an integrated remote sensing modeling product. We haven't been able to quantify this. Yeah, we, I mean, we kind of know these things, but we haven't been able to quantify them. And if you can't quantify it, you can't put it in a model. You can't make predictions based on it. Uh, current and antecedent soil moisture relate differently to wildfire in different seasons. What the, what the workshop aim was is to look at how information about soil moisture could possibly be integrated into uh, fire models or other uh, decision support kinds of tools uh, from fire management and researchers about uh, the role of soil moisture and its influence on fire. I like the concept. The dense group? The spatially dense group. <laughs> um. What is something interesting that you learned today? What are some opportunities for soil moisture monitoring and modeling to benefit applied fire modeling and fire danger rating? What are some of the main obstacles? What are some of the next steps you would like to take in response to things you heard or the people you met today? What is the best format for decision making related to fire management, data types, maps, etc.? What time interval of fire risk or soil moisture information is most helpful, feasible to support decision making and risk assessment, hourly, daily, weekly, etc.? What is the most appropriate spatial resolution of information for stakeholders? I target moderate if daily is moderate, uh, temporarily. If there's some kind of intermediate that is uh, maybe easier to attain, and then as needed, you can either downscale or upscale. Takeaways from Soil Moisture and Wildfire Prediction Workshop. Number one, more fire all of the time. Incidence of wildfire is increasing across the U.S., especially noticeable increase in large fires. However, there is a possibility that there are more complexes. Example, multiple fires that become one. Instead of individual fires, which makes the individual fire size larger. Fire ignition is difficult to predict, but fire potential may be more realistically predicted. Number two, soil moisture is useful for fire danger and prediction. As soil moisture data sets become more available, there is a shift toward using more quantitative measures of soil moisture instead of previously used indices of soil moisture and drought. Recent research has indicated that soil moisture is a valuable data set for the fire modeling community. Number three, some outstanding questions about soil moisture and wildfire relationships. What role can soil moisture play in fire potential assessments? Can soil moisture be integrated into existing prediction systems to gain benefit of soil moisture mapping? Can we glean a useful relationship between soil moisture and fuel moisture and loads, live and dead, and do this to help decision makers? Number four, what are the benefits of using in situ or remotely sensed soil moisture data and can they be complementary? Number five, who are the stakeholders for this work? Public, national, regional, and local decision makers need fire danger potential information. Decision makers are generally not really seeking soil moisture information, perhaps because it has historically been unavailable. The fire community is very diverse. Number six, time intervals and spatial resolution. 
found that there was a very wide range of information used to make management decisions and predictions depending upon application and audience. There is a need to engage target audiences to help narrow focus. Number seven, there is still a need to conduct empirical research. Both statistical and physical models are important. Significant value to comparing, exploring data and protocols for areas outside the U.S. I want to um, thank everyone for uh, being here today. I think it's been very, very successful workshop. Um, I have learned a lot.